Tenor Tech. Tenor Tech. Tenor Tech. Tenor Tech. Hello, this is Tenor Tech. And today I'm going to be showing you how to build a special ferric chloride agitator for agitating the ferric chloride solution while it's etching a circuit board. So that way your circuit board can be etched far faster than it would normally if it was just sitting there unagitated. So, let's get started. Now to build this ferric chloride agitator, you're going to need a few parts. So you're going to need to have a Tupperware container that can hold uh, the ferric chloride. And you're going to need to have a motor, some nails, some screws, some magnets, some rubber bands, some roller ball bearings. Then over here you're going to need to have a little power supply that can supply 5 volts or whatever the recommended um, amount of voltage is for your motor. You're also going to need to have a little piece of plywood. What you'll need for tools is a drill, a hot glue gun, uh, some screwdriver, a drill bit, a pencil, some wire strippers, and a saw. What you're going to need to do first is you're going to need to make two plates of plywood. One of them needs to be smaller than the other because it's going to go on top, and it's going to allow the ferric chloride solution to, to sit upon it. So I'm going to take this and set it on here. I'm going to mark out the different sizes. Now that I have the two pieces of wood already marked out, now we can start um, cutting them out. So to cut this plywood, what I did is I used uh, some clamps to hook it onto this uh, workbench. And now I'm going to use my jigsaw, and I'm going to cut along these lines until I have my two plates cut out. So, here we go. So, now after all the wooden pieces have been cut, it's time to start putting things together. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the bottom plate, and I'm going to put three of these ball bearings on the bottom in the dead center in the shape of a triangle. Now these bearings will hold up this top plate and it will allow it to slide when it vibrates to agitate the ferric chloride. So I have the bearings arranged and I'm going to take the screw. I'm going to take a drill. I'm going to go. And there we go. There's the first screw and then I'll put it on the other ones. Now, the next step is to, pre to prepare the top plate by drilling four holes in here to insert magnets. So that way when I set the Tupperware container on top, it'll be able to hold on to the piece of wood. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this drill and I'm going to use this special half inch drill bit. I'm going to drill a hole right where the magnets are. I'm only drilling a partial hole because I only want the magnet to sit inside. So as you can see the magnet's sitting there pretty good. After all the holes are drilled, you can see that the magnets stick in there pretty well. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to push all the magnets inside the wood and I'm going to hot glue them so that way they stay in. After all the magnets are hot glued in place, you can see that if I set this Tupperware on top and I stick the magnets on, the Tupperware is held pretty well in place, even when it vibrates, it stays pretty good. The next step is going to be to fasten the motor onto this um, little bit of uh, particle board. This motor is going to be the vibrator motor, and it's what's going to make the whole thing agitate and work. So I'm going to bolt it in. One screw. I'm going to bolt this screw in. As you can see, the motor's held in there pretty dang good. It's not going anywhere. Now, the, the vibrator motor can then be hot glued to the actual magnet board that's going to be holding the Tupperware container using just some hot glue and some pressure. Now, to make the motor so it actually vibrates, you need to put an offset. So I'm taking this little piece of wood with a little hole drilled inside it, I'm going to put a little bit of hot glue inside the hole, and then I'm going to stick it on there, and it should hold. Now to make sure that the two plates stay together while they're vibrating, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a nail, I'm going to hammer a nail into each corner of this plate. This nail will hold some rubber bands. So that's one nail, and then I'll put all the other ones in.
Also, you need the hammer and nails going an angle into the bottom plate. This will hold the rubber bands on. This will hold the top plate to the bottom plate. Once both plates have nails, you can set one on top of the other one, and you can use rubber bands to hold them in place. So I would recommend you do is take one rubber band, wrap it around to the bottom nail, and then go back up and hold it back. Then do the nail on the other side. So after you have all the nails and rubber bands in place, all we have to do is hook up the motor to the power supply, and it should work. As you can see, the rubber bands and the nails help it move freely, and even when you spin the counterweight by yourself, it moves. So, let's wire up the motor. So I'm going to attach small lengths of wire to the end of each motor wire, just so I can extend the length. After both wires are attached, I'm going to add a screw right here to hold the wires in place, so that way they don't vibrate as the motor vibrates. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to put another screw inside here to uh, hold all the wires securely inside. There we go. The wires are secured and placed and the motor works. Now, after being attached to the power supply, we can now plug it in and see how it works. As you can see, it works very well. This whole thing is agitating and it will work very well when attached to ferric chloride. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the Tupperware full of water and set it on here. And because when I'm actually etching ferric chloride, I have a bottom container full of water that's heated to keep the ferric chloride warm, so this is realistically what's going to be in the agitator. So I'm going to take the magnets and I'm going to put it in. All you have to do is really throw the magnets and they stick to the magnets on the other side because they're so strong. And once the magnets are in place, I can turn it on, and you can see how agitated the water gets. So, here we go. As you can see, the water is being very agitated, and this will agitate the ferric chloride as it's etching, and so that way the process will go much faster. Now let's try it with the actual container of ferric chloride inside the water. As you can see, the ferric chloride is agitated too, and it will work very well. Thank you for watching, and please subscribe.